Overall, my experience was life-changing. I plan on moving there permanently soon. And no, it ain't because of the two and a half weeks I spent there. See, I told you you'd want to stay. I already made plans to move there, so don't think. Son of a Welcome to Under the African Sun. I'm your friendly African NPC. I'm going to Africa. So I was on YouTube like any other day when this video popped up on my feed. A creator I like was in South Africa. So I was like, hey, I made a video about South Africa and America. He's an American coming to South Africa. Link to the original video is in the description. And let's go. Going to another continent two and a half weeks ago was scary. I ain't gonna cap. I went to South Africa. Welcome to the motherland. We have cookies. Now let's be honest. If you've been in captivity, I mean America. <laughs> I thought America was the land of the free. All your life had a stereotypical perspective of it based off a of one cent a day can save this child's life African commercial, African booty scratcher jokes, and been brainwashed to think that they have it advanced past Tinky's huts and despair. What did he say? Despair. Despair. <laughs> you probably think everybody look like this too. Well, cut the crap, because I'm here to tell you from experience, that's cap. I used to think, Africa, I don't want to go to no Africa. It's probably going to be a zoo in my backyard or something. Like, give me some cool place to visit, like Japan or the DR. Until I went there. You shouldn't have come. Now you want to come live here. Okay, first off, coming into South Africa, I didn't see naked people running around chucking spears and going back to their huts to hump their ladies. Everyone there, even the cities were very modern. They had different spots. The super modern cities, the cultural modern cities, the ancient cultural areas, the safari areas, the poor areas, the rich areas that have the folks that finesse the economy, the suburbs, almost endless plots of land with mountains almost everywhere, a bunch of different cultures, languages, and tribes. We got that diversity, baby. The vacation spots were also really nice, too. I recommend Durban or Cape Town. And I prefer Cape Town if anyone is asking. I like the cold. Now, my biggest headache living there for almost three weeks was the constant power shutoffs. The second I turn on the Wi-Fi, boom. The minute I turn on too many lights, bam. The millisecond I turn on the washer, pow. The electricity thing is a South African thing, though. Just say load shedding and you traumatize a South African. Why? Corruption. I was walking through the mall that week and the power randomly shut off. In the mall! In the mall! Besides that, the food was busting. The drinks were okay, except for the grape tizers and hazelnut lattes. The mugs were so good, bro. Make you want to smack your grandma. Grape tizers sucks, though. The air is clean. The clouds are real. The land is rich. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if you were digging and found some gold off rip. The pigeons were more masculine than the modern man. Can confirm, them pigeons be hard. They don't give a fuck. Nah, for real. Like, I may have been in South Africa, but them pigeons was from New York. I ain't smell not one ounce of fear in them, bro. Like, where they Tim's at? <laughs> you say one wrong thing to them pigeons, and they might pull out a shank. The roads wasn't nothing like the states. They were opposite. And so were the driver's side seats in the car, which at first had me confuzzled. I'm so used to the right that if I drove in South Africa, there might not be none of me left. I can't stress this enough. If you go to a restaurant, make sure you tip the waiter 10% or it'll be offensive. If you don't got it, I understand. But if you do, go ahead and give up the goods, my boy. Especially if they know. That's the norm over there because a good portion of the waiters aren't freaking millionaires or even highly paid workers for that matter. They struggling almost as much as the hobos on the street. Off rip, you wouldn't even know because that waiter uniform makes them look like regular middle class people. You're wrong. Same thing for the workers in other professions. Just be mindful. Straight up, you don't know what people are going through in their daily lives. Don't play with these people money, and they won't play with you. Don't believe me? I had an associate of mine get choked out that same week because her car declined in an Uber, so you have been warned. South African Uber goes hard, bro. Whatever you do, don't mess with those guys. Anybody who goes against the taxi mafia and comes out alive is a threat. Just saying. The neighborhoods are actually safe. <clears throat> a lot of their neighborhoods. There's electric fences over the walls and the gates. And they got fences that'll impale you if you try to jump over it. Yeah, freak around and end up like Neji if you want to. Oh, Devante, that's not an electric fence. 
offense of any kind. That's a stock nonsense. What you're looking at is not a wall. It's a stop nonsense. A South African engineering phenomenon which dates back millennia. See, it turns out that on the other side of this structure is nonsense. <laughs> a burglar? Nonsense. Your neighbor's snot-nosed kid throwing a ball over the wall. That's nonsense, too. And it's kept out by this year. You see, it's made out of anti-nonsense compounds found only in the southern parts of Africa. A certain American politician wanted to build one of these along the southern border, but South Africa said no. Back to you in studio, Simon. The residents there think America is this dreamland until Americans like me school them on how it ain't all peaches and cream. It's more like gravy, turd, and hot sauce mixed together, especially if you're of the sun-kissed complexion. You have your stereotypes, we have our stereotypes. Personally, America scares the shit out of me. I would visit, sure but never lived there. Raise a family? You insane? Speaking of residents, if you get looked at funny because of whatever, don't pay it no mind. They gonna think what they think about foreigners, and if you're too nice, get tough, because they will, and I do mean will, try to hustle you if you don't know how things work over there, especially if you're a foreigner with money. I ain't saying you don't gotta help them out, but be careful is all I'm saying. There was a saying in Mozambique, Estrangeiro rima con dinheiro, which means foreigner rhymes with money. A lot of people over there try to imitate African-American diaspora culture from the swag, the looks, the music, the lingo, etc. In the slums of South Africa cities, I don't recommend going there because it's rough. Like, rougher than the South African suburbs, which are still struggling classes mixed in. I seen a little kid in the slums on the corner looking like a depressed father with eight kids, a $50,000 tax bill, $700,000 mortgage loan, and a nagging masculine wife with three more baby mamas. Oh, damn! And I gotta give some of these people their credit. Instead of selling that booger sugar, the poor people out there were hustling to get that money and food. I was bombarded by folks trying to do anything for my money. Putting on street shows, a little bit of gas, I ain't gonna lie. Selling products they made, even try to charge me for me filming with my own camera. Oh, and uh, singing. Song number three, Chad. Ain't no way. I had to give them some type of bread for that performance. You know, at least they're not robbing nobody. Crime in South Africa is pretty bad. The popo and the security are way more calmer and nicer, unlike the states where they could put a strap in your face and get away with it. Did you buy someone a cold drink? Sus. Granted, they won't shove a Nisekai boomstick in your face, so that's a good thing. But I'd be more scared of the security because they'd be more strapped than the officers. Bro, I saw security at the South African malls at each corner, AK slapped across chest, eye in the direction of the butts. <laughs> ah, yep, AK or not, men gonna be men. <laughs> Overall, my experience was life-changing. I plan on moving there permanently soon. And no, it ain't because of the two and a half weeks I spent there. See, I told you you'd want to stay. I already made plans to move there, so don't think. Son of a Anyway, thanks for visiting our part of the world. I think everybody should have the opportunity to travel where they want. I know I want to go to the so-called cool places like Japan and the DR. So, I'm glad he's had a mostly positive experience, and we'll continue to show it in next part. Right? Right? Thanks for watching the video, guys. Spam that like button if you want to see a part 2 when you post the next part, or if I should react to his vlogs. Sub for more content, and I'll see you in the next video. I've been your friendly African NPC, and see you in the next one.